G'day everyone, welcome back to another XS650 video. Um, more wiring today. So last time you saw it, it had ignition and I got it charging. Um, and what I've done since then is basically just wire everything else up except the gauge. So all of the lights work, the horn works, um, all that's left to do is really clean up the wiring and connect the gauge. So I'll give you a quick rundown of what I did. It's not gonna be super in depth. Um, and then we'll get into the jobs for today. All right, starting at the handlebars. Um, I'm running the original switches. Now they used to earth through the handlebars and there used to be an earth strap running to the bottom of one of the riser mounts here back to battery negative. Um, but because I've replaced the handlebars and they're powder coated, I'm not real confident with the earth that I'm gonna get through that. So I've run an extra earth wire to each switch block um, back to a common which goes back to battery negative and that's working out quite well. So if anyone else is going to replace the handlebars on their XS650, that's probably something you're going to have to look at too. All right, so up front, I'm running with the original headlight bucket. Actually, it's not even the original. It's got Suzuki stamped on it. Um, this bike was a bit so before I got it, but I think it looks all right. Um, so I'm just going to run with it. Um, so that's all wired up. I've got high and low beam. I've also got... Uh, these bullet indicators, they are incandescent, but I think they're bright enough. And because I'm not running LEDs, it means I don't have to worry about a new flasher can or diodes or anything else like that. Right at the rear, um, I've got an LED tail light and the same indicators that I've got on the front. The LED tail light was about $30 off eBay, but I'm pretty happy with the build quality and uh, it's actually quite bright. I'll give you a look at that now. So there's the tail light. And there's the brake and the indicators as well. You can't really see that one, let's go back to that one. Right, so as you can see, the indicators are still pretty bright. They actually look brighter in real life than they do on the video. Um, so that's that. All right, so the main wiring loom itself um, is in exactly the same configuration uh, that it would have been from stock. Uh, so there's only one 20 amp fuse in it because that's all these bikes had. Um, and that's why I'm running three mil wire. So that's gonna be able to cope with 20 amps. Um, the only exception that I'm gonna make to that is the gauge. As you can see, uh, that's a much finer gauge wire. So I'm gonna run an inline fuse to the gauge and put a 7.5 amp fuse on that one. Um, I could have just bought a aftermarket wiring loom, but they cost about $250. So all I did was get three meters of seven core trailer wire, um, stripped it down to its individual strands. And so I had a bunch of different colors and then connected it all up with these automotive bullet connectors. Um, they're all heat shrunk on just to make them a bit more waterproof. And yeah, that's it for the wiring really. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna disconnect it all, tidy it all up, and then we'll connect the gauge. All right, so the gauge is connected now. I didn't wanna cut any of the cables. This is them here. So what I've done is I've just coiled them up and then zip tied them to the frame just to keep them out of the way. So all of the wiring's been tidied up and zip tied out of the way. Uh, all I've done there is just tape it up feed it through there. You can see it's pretty busy underneath the tank, but once the tank goes on, you don't see any of that anyway. I also took off the front wheel just so I can turn the steering through its full range of motion to make sure I've got enough slack on the cables that it doesn't pull any connectors out. All right, so now for the gauge. Um, this gauge is a Daytona Valona TAC Speedo. I got it from Rogue Motorcycles in WA. It definitely wasn't the cheapest item I've bought for the bike. I don't remember the exact price. I'll chuck it in the description but it's the only piece of electrical equipment that I bought for the bike, uh, bar the lights and stuff, that actually worked the way it said it was supposed to work out of the box. It came with some really decent uh, installation instructions that made it really easy to put on, um, and it just looks really cool. So you turn it on and it goes through its startup sequence, which all looks pretty cool. So it's got a neutral indicator light there, as you can see. It's also got 
high beam indicator as well as left and right turn signal indicators. It does have the facility there for a warning light, but I don't actually have any warning senders on this engine, so I'm not using it at the moment. So these are the uh, installation instructions that came with the gauge. As you can see here, it's got a pretty decent description of all the connectors and what they connect to. I hooked it up exactly the way it said and everything just worked, which I was pretty happy with. It's also got some very easy to follow instructions on how to set it up and calibrate it for speed. Um, I haven't actually done that yet, but I'll cross that bridge a little bit later. But yeah, all in all, very happy with this gauge. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there for this one. Um, as I said before, not super in-depth. Uh, I just couldn't figure out how to film this stuff and make it interesting to watch. If anyone out there has any questions on what I did or how I did it, I'm more than happy to answer those questions. But to be honest, I'm just really glad that the wiring's done because it's just so fucking tedious. And now I can move on with something fun. As always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.